Hey, welcome back. So ever since Alpaca has been released, I've had this want to be able to create my own large language model by using the same techniques that Alpaca and Vicuna does, which is to take a base model, such as any of the Llama base models, and then fine tune my own data over the top to create my own large language model. The major barrier to that, of course, is cost, because you need access to graphics cards to be able to fine tune those models, and that's still quite an expensive gain. However, this week, there's been a new project that's been released called QLaura, which allows you to efficiently fine tune models and run them on consumer grade hardware. That is an absolute game changer. And the reason it's a game changer is that it's not massively affecting the performance of the underlying model. So in this video, what we're gonna do is mess around with QLaura using Google Colab, and then we're gonna not only run the model on a Colab GPU, but we're gonna fine tune our own model and see what that looks like. Alrighty, so if you haven't seen QLaura before, if you go to github.com and go to artadoro forward slash QLaura, you see that on my screen there then you will get all of the details about the QLaura project. Now, there is a paper, et cetera, that you can read. I'm not gonna spend too much time uh, on this, but kind of what you can see on my screen is exactly what I said before, that QLaura is an efficient fine-tuning approach that reduces memory usage enough to fine-tune a 65 billion parameter model on a single 48 gigabyte GPU. Now, we're not gonna do a 65 billion parameter model because I don't have even a 48 gig GPU. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna take a 20 billion parameter model, which is the GPT Neo X 20 billion model, and then we'll run that on a Google Colab machine. So that should be able to fit on that and run purely within the GPU. So I'm not gonna go too much into the details of how LoRa works, et cetera, but you can get the idea that here it's saying it preserves a full 16-bit fine-tuning task performance. However, it's doing it via four-bit quantized pre-training, which essentially means that you're gonna take a very large model and then you're gonna cut it down to a much smaller size there, 16 bits down to four bits. But the key thing is, according to this paper, is that they're not losing the performance. So large models, which is what we need to have a good LLM, but actually running it on smaller hardware. Now, as part of this paper, one of the things they've also done is they've actually taken the underlying Llama model and then they've fine-tuned it in the same way as you would with an Alpaca or a Vicuna, and then they've created their own base models built on top of that, uh, which is called Guanaco. So again, I'm assuming it's another sort of camel-based thing. I'm My knowledge in biology of camels is not that great, but I'm assuming that is the case there. And again, they reckon that, that it actually performs super well and is one of the best performing models that you can imagine in that Llama base uh, line. Now, if you want to, you can open up a, you can obviously download that, but you can go into something like Hugging Face. So if I want to, I can interact with the model, so I can write something like, who is Ada Lovelace, uh, and we can hit send, and then it's gonna come back fairly quickly. You know, Ada Lovelace, British mathematician, writer, blah, 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 which is fine. And again, I can ask it my favorite question, what is faster? a horse or a duck. And there you can see it reckons horses are faster than ducks, but it's not considering flying, is it? Anyway, I think Guanaco is uh, an interesting model. I'll probably spend longer looking at m that model in another video, but for just now, we're gonna ignore that and we're actually gonna create our own model. So as I said before, we are gonna use a model called GPT Neo X 20 billion, which is a slightly smaller model. It's a 20 billion parameter model, so that should be able to run on something like Google Colab. And again, it's a very permissive language. It's trained on the pile. It's an Apache 2 license, so there's no sort of legal concerns that you could have, which you may have with some of the Llama-based models, because obviously they're for research uh, use only by the meta licensing terms. And again, this was developed by Luther AI, so again, you can use this. And again, the Hugging Face has a way of interacting with that. And I can write something in there such as uh, Tom Brady is, 
and then we can see what it's going to come back with. So again, it's a text completion. Tom Brady's a great player, but he's not a great quarterback. Whoa, that's unfair. We're going to deal with you in another video, my friend. Anyway, so we've got the idea. Um, so let's go into Google Colab and actually create the model for ourselves. Alrighty, so to start with, what we need to do is go to colab.research.google.com. Again, you should be able to do this for free because there is X number of um, uh, compute units that you get for free with Google Colab. You know, if you exceed that, you may want to purchase uh, something for yourself. But again, you should be able to do that for free. So I'm going to click on new notebook. I will share a copy of the notebook I've been using called Cular Fine Tune. I will put that in my GitHub repo and you can download that for yourself at some point. But we will create this from scratch so you can get used to be able to doing this yourself. So I will click on that new notebook and that is going to create me a brand new empty notebook. So just before I do that, one of the things I need to do is just make a slight change in my runtime. So I am going to uh, go to my change runtime type and you see I've got my runtime type is Python 3 and I need to just set my hardware accelerator to GPU. You can see it's defaulted to A100. I think that's a, you know, a, a little much in this case. So I'm just going to select T4. Uh, that will be your default uh, that you kind of have when if you're using uh one of the kind of free units there. So we'll just type that in. Uh, I've now got the right runtime. It's just going to uh, connect to that runtime. And first thing that I need to do is I'm going to want to install my dependencies. So you see here within the uh, Qlora paper, uh, it's got some fairly good information to load mod models in four bits with transformers and bits and bytes. You have to install accelerate and transformers from source and make sure you have the latest versions of bits and bytes library and you can achieve with these commands. So essentially, uh, these are your dependencies that you need to have. They're going to be using the bits and bytes config, et cetera, to make this work. And then they're going to be using all the pest stuff, et cetera. So that's all pretty cool. So all I need to do is type in uh, plus code here. I'm going to paste this in. Alrighty, so my dependencies are now installed. And the next thing I want to do is be able to load my new GPT Neo X uh, model. So if I come back into the GitHub repo for a second, you can kind of see here in the quantization section, it says uh, a whole bunch of stuff where I can load a model using model equals from pre-trained. The big thing that I need to do within that is this is basically what I'm going to copy in here. The big thing that I really need to do is set my model to uh, the Luther uh, AI GPT Neo X uh, 20B. Literally, that is all I'm going to have to type in there, which is this uh, Eleuther AI GPT Neo X 20B. So it's literally using the namespace from hugging uh, face. So I will just click plus code again, and then I will I will paste this in. This is pretty much the same code uh, from the GitHub that I just showed you there. Um, but as you can see, I've got this Eleuther AI GPT Neo X 20 billion model name put in there. Everything else is the same. Load of four bits true. That's one of the key things you need to say there is it's going to be a four bit uh, quantization there. I'm going to switch on double quant. So all of these settings are exactly how they were uh, in the other in the other piece there. And then. I just need to hit uh, play on this again, and then what it's going to do is download that model. Now, that model is fairly large. It's something like 40 gig or something that it needs to download. It's not a small model, so it's going to take a little bit of time. But once that's done uh, and in memory, then we can then interact with the model. All right, so that's now completed and the model is loaded. And you can kind of see it takes about six and a half minutes to load that model. So it's a fairly large model in that sense. So now that it's loaded, what we are going to do is just interact with the model in the same way as we did via Hugging Face. So at this point, I'm not doing any fine tuning or anything like that. I am basically just going to call the model. So I'm just going to click plus code here. I'm going to paste in a little bit of code. All I'm going to be putting in here is text. So I'm going to use that exact same example that I had before, Tom Brady is. And then the device here is set to CUDA at colon zero. So that's basically saying go use my uh, GPU. And then uh, the inputs is I'm going to be setting this to tokenize the text return tensor PT to device. So and then outputs model generate blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to set it to max new tokens equals to 20. So I'm just going to be returning uh, 20 tokens. And then uh, I'm just going to print out the results. Now, in if we come back into um, the Qlora GitHub for a second, 
I will share the overall notebook that I've created with everyone. But if you look here, there is a notebook which shows you how to execute these models here. So you can go and check that out for yourself. And then there's one that's gonna be doing fine tuning as well. And again, mine is basically a cut down version of those notebooks. So if we come back in here and then I just execute this, we should be getting a response from the underlying model and we should see something similar for Tom Brady there. So there we go, it comes back now with Tom Brady is a great quarterback, but he's not the best quarterback in the NFL. It is completely wrong, I am gonna deal with that in another video, but for just now we will just take the insult from uh, this note, uh, large language model for a second. So again, I have not fine tuned anything at this point. This is just me executing against the uh, base uh, GPT Neo X 20 billion parameter model. We are gonna do some fine, fine tuning, I'm going to use the same example that is in the uh, default kind of version of the uh, the Qlora paper, which is one of the paper, one of the data sets they used to fine tune the model was a thing called the English quotes uh, data set. So I have that in front of me here. You can see there's an Oscar Wilde quote, which is always forgive your enemies, nothing annoys them so much. Um, there's a few other ones in there uh, that we could probably use. So let's cut and paste a couple of these and then see what happens within this base model. So we'll change this from Tom Brady is and then we will put in always forgive your enemies. Uh, let's see what it comes back with. So there you go, always forgive your enemies but never forget your enemies. So it doesn't know that particular quote, right? Uh, so it's not ingested that from the English quotes database. Let's go with this one, two things are infinite. Let's see if it knows uh, good old Albert Einstein. Okay, so it kind of knows that two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. I'm not sure about the former, that's close enough to what it's about here. It says I'm not sure about the universe. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fine tune uh, that quotes data set that I was showing you a second ago and make it part of the model. So we'll just create some new code. The first thing I really need to do is prepare the data set. So I've just pasted in a bunch of code here. It will be in that notebook that I was talking about earlier. And it's also in the fine tuning notebook that is in uh, the original paper there. But but it, all you can kind of see in this case is it's just setting ourselves up ready to do the fine tuning. So it's getting the underlying kind of like configuration for Laura, et cetera. So it's all gonna work properly. So I don't need to do much, I just need to run this. Alrighty, so that's done that now and it took about 38 seconds to do that. And now what I need to do is load in the model. Okay, so now it's done that, all I need to do is load the data set that we're gonna to use to fine tune. So as you can see, I am just gonna use the uh, Hugging Face data sets uh, library and then I'm gonna load data set and I'm gonna use aberrate English quote. So I'm just gonna pull one of the data sets from Hugging Faces, the same one that I showed you in my VS Code a second ago. And then I'm just gonna set up all the data mappings, etc. So we will uh, hit play on that. Of course, it's gonna download the data set. It's fairly small and then uh, it will be loaded in and then we can do the uh, training. Now, just so you know, if you wanted to create your own data sets, which we will do in a future video to fix that Tom Brady problem, then all you need to do is put your own data set in here and change it to the one that you wanna use for the fine tuning. We will do another video on that because this Tom Brady not being the greatest quarterback thing it keeps coming back with needs to be fixed. So we will do a fine tuning in a different video. Uh, but for just now, uh, we're just gonna use this English quotes one. So okay, so it's taken about five seconds to load that data set. And then the last thing I need to do is do the training. So to do the training, all I need to do is import transformers, and then I'm gonna use this transformers.trainer, and then eventually I'm gonna do the train down here, and then I'm setting all my configuration settings. Again, as I said before, if you go in the Qlora uh, notebook, or the one that I'm, I will release with part of this video, all of that uh, is there. But you can kind of see that it's fairly simple to do that. I'm gonna hit uh, the run command, and then it's gonna do the training on the uh, English quotes data set that we just loaded a second ago. 
Alrighty, so it's now completed the training. It took about two minutes, 41 seconds to do that. So it's fairly quick to train that. And again, that you're gonna see the same results if you run that on the free Google Colab on kind of your machine there. So very cool, two, you know, over two and a half minutes to train that. And then uh, let's rerun the queries that we had. So I'm gonna start with Tom Brady uh, to begin with. It's gonna come back with its insulting nonsense um, because the data set I have knows nothing about Tom Brady. So it should just go back to what data it's got in the underlying model. So if we run that for a second, uh, we should get pretty much the same result as we got the last time. There we go, so it comes back with Tom Brady's a great quarterback, but he's not a great leader. This model really hates Tom Brady. We're so gonna fix this at some point. Um, but as you can see, it, there's nothing in the quotes data set about that, so we wouldn't expect a different result. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to one of the quotes from the quotes data set and then see how it updates based on what we've done. So if we remember, if you remember, we used a few quotes. So one of them was this uh, Oscar Wilde one, always forgive your enemies, nothing annoys them so much. So let's uh, put this in here and we'll just run that again. And there we go, always forgive your enemies, nothing annoys them so much as to be forgiven. Now, it <laughs> Now, it has hallucinated a little bit, um, you know, and it uh, came back with George Herbert or whatever, so uh, it's close enough, but it's certainly a lot better than the version that it had before. And we can test this a little bit more as well, so let's put in the, uh, the Albert Einstein one, let's see how it does on that one. And there we go, so two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity, and I'm not sure about the universe, Albert Einstein. So you can see in the previous version before the fine tuning, it said I'm not sure about the former, and now it's moved on to using the full quote there. So two, th you know, so the fine tuning has done a pretty good job and it's got it to the sort of exact one that we need. So there you go, that's Qlora, it's literally just released earlier this week, and as you can see from that, it allows you to fine tune fairly large models on even consumer grade hardware. And in fact, for something like Google Colab, it's now small enough to take something like the Luther uh, GPT Neo X 20 billion parameter model and be able to run that for free on Google Colab, which is really, really cool. So if you don't have a graphics card yourself, then you are at least gonna be able to do some fine tuning uh, with your own data sets. So, I think it's pretty awesome. I think this is a fairly large leap in uh, you know, uh, the ability to create large lang language models yourselves and use the same techniques as Alpaca fine and Vicuna is used for fine tuning existing models. And again, they did that for their Quarkano uh, model, which was based off of the kind of uh, Llama data sets, which is really cool. And again, you're gonna be able to do that for yourself. So I think what we will do in a future video is rather than doing the kind of quote stuff is we're gonna create our own data set um, and then we will fine tune our own model off of our own data set. So anyway, I think this is super fun and it's a uh, great example of how some of large language models and AI is moving along in the open source space. So a lot of fun uh, and I'll catch you in the next video.